A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Sing and rejoice, O daughter Zion. See, I am coming to dwell among you, says the Lord. Many nations shall join themselves to the Lord on that day, and they shall be his people, and he will dwell among you. And you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. The Lord will possess Judah as his portion in the Holy Land, and he will again choose Jerusalem. Silence all in the presence of the Lord, for he stirs forth from his holy dwelling. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. The The Almighty Almighty has has done done great things things for me, and and holy holy is his name. name. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. While Jesus was speaking to the crowds, his mother and his brothers appeared outside, wishing to speak with him. Someone told him, your mother and your brothers are standing outside asking to speak with you. But he said to them, but he said in reply to the one who told him, Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? And stretching out his hand towards his disciples, he said, Here are are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of my heavenly Father is my brother, sister, and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. About 30 years ago or 40 years ago, I I read an interesting article, and in it, the author says, what would have caused most harm or most change to the world? The Axis powers winning World War II or the telephone not being invented? And I, like most people, read the article and say, well, of course, it's the Axis winning World War II, but his argument was no. 
because had the Axis won, it would have been awful, it would have been terrible, but they would have eventually have fallen, and the other, the world would more or less go, go on. But the invention of the telephone changed our lives in a very profound way. And we, in these past 50 years, have been living in a time of great change. You know, those of us who are 40 and older remember what the li life was like without the internet. How different our life is now. How, you know, I'm able to talk to my children across the world where 30 years ago you'd have thought, huh, that, that's not possible. So we live in a time of great change, and whenever there's great change, there is great confusion. Pope Francis was once quoted to say, stop thinking, or we are not living in an era of change. We are living in the change of an era. And, and I believe he's right. The world 50 years from now is gonna be vastly different than the world it is today. So how do we do this? How do we live in this time? Well, I think this feast in Our Lady of Mount Carmel and the Carmelites show us a way the original Carmelites were a group of hermits in Mount Carmel in what's now Israel. And because of different political situations and persecutions, they moved to Europe and founded their life there, but it had to change. The charism of the Carmelites, as I understand it, is based on three things, on contemplation, on fellowship, and on service. And, and we see this reflected in the readings, in the first reading, or not first reading, the gospel in particular. The disciples were ones who did the word of God, and they were able to do it because they listened. And when we listen to God, that is what basically prayer is. And they had fellowship with each other, and they served the world. And I think this is what we need to hold on during this time of change, as we need to look at what God has spoken to us by you know, giving us this feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, that basically in this time where things are changing right and left, our lives need, well, obviously to be based on God, but the way we do that is with the three pillars that the Carmelites have, prayer and contemplation. And as the Carmelites say, this could be in many ways in, you know, for many people depending upon your station in life, but prayer, focusing on God every day, meditating upon him, meditating on his word. Lexio Divina is one of the strong points of the Carmelites, but getting to know the word of God and not just reading it, but just meditating on it. Let God speak to you. And then fellowship, working with others who are similarly committed to God. This gives us strength. This gives us courage. This helps us when we fall. And again, part of fellowship is picking up your brother or sister when they fall. And, you know, guess what, people? We're human, and we're going to fall on our face. Sometimes it's going to be a little stub toe. Sometimes it's going to get covered with mud. But that's okay, because God can forgive us. And if we pick each other up, we can go on. And that of service to those around us, whoever God gives us to serve. So we need to focus on God and follow those three things. And, and I'd like to quote, leave with this quote from... Teresa of Avila, which I believe is, will really help us during this time of change. Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things are passing. God is unchanging. Patience gains all. Nothing is lacking to those who have God. God alone is sufficient. When we come to the Eucharist today, let's pray for the grace to more move to that attitude where we truly believe and truly live as if God alone is sufficient. May Jesus Christ be praised.